We've been reading input from the user for a long time, so we know if we want to read input, we need a variable. So let's say I'm going to ask the user for um, some numbers. So I need a variable, I need to prompt them, and then I'll see in to grab it. And then if I'd like to see what it was, I can print it out. So that's nothing new. Um, when we are reading information, we are specifying a particular input stream. Now, we usually have been doing that using this IO stream library, and our input stream has been read using CIN, and the standard input stream from IO stream library is the keyboard. That's where the information is going to come from the user. But perhaps we would like to instead read some information out of a file. If I'm going to do that, then I don't need to prompt the user, right? Because the file is going to have stuff in it. Nobody needs to type anything. Um, but I can't use CIN because that means it's coming from the keyboard. I need something else. So let me show you what I've got set up here. In my um, drive, on my flash drive, I have a little file called sample, and it's got a .txt extension. Inside here I have some numbers, so 15, 12, 177, and 44. To be able to read out of a text file, I need a new include library, and it is called fstream, where f is for file. And then I have to do a couple extra things down here in main. I have to make a connection to an input file. And the type of variable that represents my connection is ifstream, which is short for in file stream. So the i is for in because I'm getting information in from it. And here I can choose a variable name, um, whatever I like. I like to kind of use the word in or out when I'm working with files to specify am I reading in from them or am I writing out to them. I'm just going to call this in file. Okay. And then I need to specify, since this is the connection, I need to specify literally what file do I want to open um, and have this program use. So what I can do is in parentheses here, I'm going to specify the file. I need to have the path information as well. So if I'm looking in my folder, uh, my flash drive is being recognized as my D drive, so I'm going to have to put D colon backslash sample.txt. So inside here, I'm going to tell it this file is D colon backslash file.txt. And now you may note um, when we write backslashes, if you'll remember, uh, that usually means escape sequence, so I'm going to need to type 2 so that it knows what I'm talking about. Okay, um, and now there's a couple extra things. It could be that I have a typo in this uh, name. It could also be that for some reason I'm not allowed to read that file. For example, if I put um, something into the Petter hand-in folder on the school network, you wouldn't be able to read from it because that is protected from you unless it was your own file. But if it was another student's file, your program would not be allowed to read from it because of the permissions on the file. So the next thing I need to do is see if it successfully opened that thing. So I'm going to check if in file dot fail, which means it didn't open, then I'm going to have an error message. Oops. to indicate that I couldn't open it, so I can't proceed with the rest of this business. Okay. If it did successfully open, then I'm going to do my reading. So I'm still going to need my variable and my read. Okay. So I've got an integer called num. We're just going to read for the moment um, this the first integer out of this file, which is this 15. And so Really the only difference now between reading from the human who's typing into the keyboard and reading from the file is that I need to change the word that's here so that instead of coming from the standard input stream, the keyboard, it comes from the file stream. And this is what I've called my file stream, which is in file. So all I have to do is replace this. And now it should read that number from the file. Okay. And what I like to do at the very end is I like to do some cleanup. So when I'm done reading from the file, I'm going to close it. And then um, if I were going to use it to reopen and, and 
work with a different file with this file stream, I would have to clear it. Um, this line is not needed in this particular example because we're not doing anything else with the file after this point. But that's a good thing to remember if you're going to reuse the file stream to connect to a different file or to connect to the same file and read it again, um, you need to clear it after you close it. Okay, so let's see what this guy does. Uh, do I have a catch down here? Let's make sure I do. Yeah, I do. Okay, let's run this. And I should hopefully get on the screen the number 15. Oh, problem opening file. Okay. okay. Oh, because I didn't call it. Yeah, duh. I didn't call it file, I called it sample. So that's where you see that message is necessary because I am asleep at the wheel here. All right, number was 15. Okay, so it read the first number out of this file. And when it does a read, it leaves my cursor um, right here. Uh, it hasn't read the next number. It doesn't know it needs to do that. I could do that manually by having another in file um, in extraction operator to variable. But I don't know necessarily how many are in the file, especially over time if the file is changing and somebody else is inputting numbers into it. So what I'd like to do when I'm reading from a file, if I want to just read all of them, is I can use a loop. And this is a little bit weird, but this thing, this read, will return a true if it was able to read information or a false if it wasn't. So I can put it inside of a loop and use it as the condition. So that means while you can read this, do read it. And then um, we'll put inside the body of the loop the printout of the number so you can see what number it had at that moment. And it will keep doing that until it fails to do an additional read, which should be after it reads the last number in the file. Let's see if that works. 15, 12, 177, 44. And let's just verify, yep, those are the numbers in my file. So a while loop can be used to read the file until it hits the end. Okay. Now what if I have different things in here, not just numbers? Um, I'm going to put some of these duplicates I have open so I don't have trouble. So what if it was, um, these were actually scores, so let's call this Bob scores 15. Um, Billy Joe is 12, um, Amy is 1, Kara is 77, and Maxwell is 44. So now I have um, some strings, some integers. Some of my strings have more than one word. Um, Actually, I'm going to show you that with just one more the strings for a second. Um, I have mixed types inside this file. Well, what I can do is if I know the structure of the file always goes string, number, string, number, string, number, string, number, then I can count on that. So let's get and make a variable called name. Um, the first thing in the file is always the name. So I'm going to read into that first. And then what I can do is I know that every time there's a name, there's also a corresponding number. So I can do an additional read to the other variable. So this line will read the string. If it was successful, it will then read the number. And then I can print out the score. So let's do this. Let's say. So we'll say whose score was what for each of these guys. Let's try this and make sure I saved this file. Okay, let's run. So now I've pulled the name and I've pulled the number corresponding to it. And if my record was longer and had more fields, I could do additional reads inside here, as many as I need to. Okay, now what if they actually had last names? Bob Young, Billy, oops, here, Amy, oh, so, Kara, Bree, Maxwell, Caulfield. What if I had multiple 
uh, words and I would need to use a get line, well, I can use a get line with infold just like I do with cn. So I can switch this kind of read here to a get line read so that it grabs the first and the last name. Um, but I do have the skipping ahead problem. Um, usually we say if you read with a regular CN and you're about to read with the get line again, you need a CN.ignore. Well, here I read with a regular in file and then I'm going to read with a get line when I loop back up. So I need an ignore, but instead of being an ignore on the keyboard, it's an ignore on the file stream. Okay, let's see if that works. Yeah, so now I've read their full name, I've read their scores, I've repeated that throughout whatever's in the file. That is how you get input from a file.